Nice stuff, very good. Come on in. Nice guys, good progressions. That's a pretty hard one to be able to get to that point, okay? Side control stuff. Side control stuff, especially if you got Sifu J on top of you, right? Dumog, everything is going to show you that these positions here hurt a lot and they become heavy. Side control, the number one thing, bridge shrimp frame. So when I'm in what's called side control position two in my world, when I'm here and I'm controlling, we have a frame. We have a frame. We need to get another frame in. So when I'm here, he's gonna bridge, shrimp, frame, the knee comes in. If I'm still holding on, his arm touches his other arm and he extends and he pushes away. That's gonna break that. His feet are gonna get onto the hip. And now you have four weapons versus my two. That's your goal. So right now, just three reps each. Good, hands. Good, feel free to squeeze on tight here, go. Now you get a little workout in of your grips. He's gonna use his ass more and thrust it forward. And that's gonna open it up. That's why people love jujitsu because they're like, this shit works when somebody's squeezing onto me hard. Have fun, three, two, one. So if you train jujitsu, soft. You're here, look at my bridge. What's lazy about it? Something's lazy about my bridge. Not on my toes, my hip isn't pushed to full extension. If I was driving that, look how much further that can go. Look at my shrimp, it's quite far away. And this is very interesting. This always happens whenever I teach side control stuff is the top leg wants to come in first. When we want that bottom leg to come in first, sometimes. If he has a knife, all of this changes. So he's in side control. He kind of knows what he's doing. And he starts feeling me bridge into him. And he starts feeling that he's about to have a good fight on his hands. This is where in his mind, he's like, man, I'm going to have to murder this guy. Or possibly, depending on who he is. He wants to murder me. Look at him. Right? So as I go to bridge, I feel his hand leave his body and go to get his knife. Right away, warning signs are going off. So I disengage this frame right away. And I'm trying to find where that is. Notice how I'm groping his shoulder first and then moving the way down to where's that position. To so looking for that. So this is where when that comes in, sometimes you might just have this happen. Sometimes this is already kicked in and your frame has come across here and this happens. But this is the position I want you in. I also want you to get really close to me, Chris, and put all this pressure into me. This is the position. You're hugging, you're in super tight. So my bridge frame, frame brings the bottom leg in. The top leg is what's monitoring the arm, getting to here. One big thing I kept fixing in that guard drill was you were just here holding on to this. I'm pushing this way and pulling this in. Notice the pressure that puts on his body. He's gonna hug me with the head. He's gonna hold all this in nice and tight. So bottom frame with the leg and up. So again, no knife. We have to get, you know, you're gonna draw your knife. <laughs> Okay, so I'm here, he's recognizing that there's possibly an issue. I'm going through my drills, trying to monitor this and find this. When we pressure test this, the amount of times I get stabbed here, especially if they have a fast draw, is hard. So I'm trying to find all this, and I want you guys to finish where it feels like you're hugging. Okay, so get super, super tight. There's no space, you're holding onto this. Okay, three, two, one. Find the knife, find the knife. Good. Yeah, get that bottom leg. Good, and then get that chin across the bicep. Nice, good, good, good. Nice, yeah, so that's there. Good, nice, that's all good, that's good. Nice, good, and then get really close. We're gonna be going for that leg after with that. Yeah, there you go, you know it, you know. If you don't hug, it's just a little bit different, okay? But I want you to think about it. It couldn't, or it could just be a rock that it, they've grabbed on the ground. He's gonna start eating punches on the street, grab, twist, and pull, right? That's what everybody in the comment section says. So that's what he needs to feel. We need that hand monitoring where that is. He's still simultaneously shrimping away and getting that bottom knee in, okay? So when I get to here, if you notice his position, how far away he is, right? So yes, he has this, yes, he has this, right? If you're this far away and you're not hugging, right? He just puts his feet to my hip and he's controlling. I will guarantee you guys will try and do the drill I'm about to show you, but you're in that position and you shouldn't be trying that drill. You should be escaping. So 
when I'm here and I found all this and I got to this point and all this is in nice and tight, look at how close I am to the leg. So this pressure I have on this is going to naturally push him this way. I'm going to help him go in that way. I'm going to bring my arm underneath his leg. I'm going to have to keep this tight if you back up. So it has to be a positional thing. If you guys want to do this drill, you must be close. You must be tight. So I'm here, I'm holding on to this. Now I'm sweeping. Think about doing like a back shoulder roll while I'm lifting up on my right arm and I'm pushing my left leg out. Enter in a little bit of advanced jujitsu. Now I'm here in this position. What becomes priority? Two hands on knife, two hands go to the knife. Shin comes across the face. I'm trying to find a better position to be able to get to here. There's lots of different things that will take place there. It is going to be ugly. Okay, what we have to do is find out where that sweep is. So when I'm here and he's tight, that's the feeling you want. Now you know the sweep is going to get there. If you try to lift them like that, but you're too far away, that's what you're going to look like. And when that happens, push, push, push bah, into the face or go back to the drill you were before. There's a lot of different things we can do. But ideally, we're trying to train that feeling of that drill. This comes here. Ah, shit, the knife is there. All my priorities back on that death grip. Pull that in tight. Notice if I'm out here, I'm getting extra holes in my body. If I keep that tight, now I find this. I get my sweep. Is there anything wrong with going back? Boom, driving that into here, disengaging in a way. You might not get the sweep in two minutes, but do your best. Three, two, one. Bottom. Nice, yeah. Bottom knees there, then knee on there. Perfect, very good. Now try and get sweep. But your distance is pretty far, so if I were you, I'd try and get that left leg there. Yeah, good, now sweep that way. Yeah, good, very good. Okay, good job at finding the right position for your partner of being close enough. It's very rare I get to see that percentage of sweeps from the students within the first day, okay? But our number one focus is we have to get away, right? So what I always want you guys to think about is, okay, so you're doing ground fighting. You're doing jujitsu. I love it. But train your jujitsu or train your ground fighting with the idea that a knife can be presented at any point. For me, it's not even a knife. It's just punching. I don't know about you guys. I don't like getting punched. So all of the drills for me, they get you to that position. But if you're going to do this, they're going to probably do this. They're going to pass, they're going to come up, boom, you're in your mount drill. Mount punching, mount knife. You're here in side control. Boom, he comes into here, boom, you're in your guard drill. Right? Here you're in side control. If somebody's like got a good side control and they hold you here, you're in for a fight. In my opinion, side control is the almighty. You can control somebody way bigger than you and you can keep control of them. Side control should be trained a lot in your curriculum, in my opinion leave today if you're thinking like where's that hand going you should have trust issues all the time because that can be punching can be doing a lot of different things but the more that you guys think about that you can still train your drills you can still respect your professors or your coaches but now you're just starting to get to that idea of okay what am i doing a lot of people when they're doing jits especially competition they get lost in this idea of i need to pull you in i need to sweep you i need to get to a better position well, standing up and getting back to your feet, if you were, uh, had your back on the ground, is a better position. Sometimes disengaging is probably the best thing. Then when you're disengaging, we have to be thinking, okay, are there multiple attackers? Where are my exits? And we start bringing in simple thoughts. That's it. You're still training. You're still sweating. You're still doing all the great things that martial arts will give to you. But now you're starting training with a self-defense mindset. And you don't have to say anything to your coach. If you stand up and run away, they're going to be like, what the fuck are you doing? Be like, just have that thought instead. And it'll help you guys out. Any questions from today? All of these techniques are on YouTube. Okay, go to my channel, Self Defense Kevin Goat. You'll see them all on there. Okay, I actually want to make a difference in this world. And by you guys coming out, you're choosing to help defend yourself, which is going to help you become what I'm labeling these days as a citizen defender. Because there's a lot of people out there that are crazy. And we're starting to see some crazy ass attacks right now. So if you're choosing to get involved, you better have the training to back that up, not just for yourself, but your family and maybe other people's family as well. So thank you guys so much. Round of applause for Chris for helping out.